Welcome back. In the last video, we learned how to use a T shared pointer and the T unique pointer to create smart pointers that will allow us to create a brand new class of our own custom C++ uh, type that we made outside of the Unreal Engine hierarchy. So we've got our floor node class here and we are able to create it in this begin play function for procedural room, our actor. Now we're going to create a floor class that will handle the actual splitting algorithm. So let's go over here and we'll add a new item. It's going to be a header file and we got to make sure it's in the uh, correct folder, which should be in the source folder. So let's click browse and let's go to our project name, source, procgen series. That's where our classes are. Select that folder and let's go ahead and call this floor.h and click add. And let's go ahead and add another item of the CPP variety. And now it's showing that it's going to the correct folder because we set it last. And we're going to call this floor.cpp. So we have our floor.h, we have our floor.cpp, and we can go ahead and declare our new class. So let's call this class floor. I'm going to give it a public section and create a floor constructor and I'm going to give it a floor destructor. We can go ahead and create the function bodies for these. I'm going to let IntelliSense create them for me by clicking the lamp, creating the definition. And so there we have it. Um, now I'm going to, um, I would like to create some variables and to do so I'm going to create a private section because I want to store those variables in a private section. And uh, first I'm going to create an int32 called floor grid size x. And I'm going to create an int32 called floor grid size y. And these are going to be the dimensions of the floor in grid size increments. So the uh, floor will be, um, if we look back at what we had earlier, this, we treated this uh, floor as a five by five, where each grid square was 200 by 200. And so this would be a grid size of five by five. And so the, the floor grid size X and Y would both be five in that case. And I'm also going to create a, a couple of integers, int 32s, and I'm going to call them room min X and room min Y. And these are going to be the minimum grid size per rectangle, uh, which for now on I'll just call floor node. So per floor node, um, so this means that if both min room X and Y are, are say one, then the smallest you can get is a one by one floor grid uh, floor node. Now see that we get the int32 uh, not recognized by IntelliSense. And, uh, and that's because we have just created this class uh, here and it's, um, it compiles just fine, but it doesn't, it doesn't recognize uh, the Unreal Engine typedef int32. So we're going to regenerate the Visual Studio project files and so that, that way we'll have uh, everything being recognized. And so to do that, we're going to close out of Visual Studio, we're going to close out of Unreal Engine, close out of both of them, and we're going to come here to the folder where we have our project. Now I'm going to take the saved, delete it, intermediate, delete that, and binary is going to delete that. I'm going to click on the ProcGen series U, uh, Unreal Engine project and generate Visual Studio project files. So give that a second. Okay, it's done. Now I'm going to double click on it to open it. And this will ask me if I want to uh, miss, uh, rebuild some modules. I'm going to say yes. So give it a second to rebuild some modules. Okay, so it, it finished making the modules and it opened up Unreal Engine. Now we can open up Visual Studio. Okay, so we have Unreal Engine open here and you'll see that the int32 type def is defined and we now no longer have the uh, IntelliSense errors. Okay, so we have our uh, some private variables and because this floor splitting algorithm is going to require a stack, we would like a stack to hold our floor nodes. And um, just like in a previous video explained, the stack will take elements and push them on top of a stack, stack them on top of each other. And the very last item that was added to the stack is the first item that comes out of it when you pop an item off of the stack. 
So what many Unreal Engine programmers don't know is that the T array behaves as a stack. The T array even has push and pop functions that can push items on and pop items off the top of the stack. So we're going to make use of the T array for our stack. So we're going to say T array, and our T array will be of type T shared pointer floor node. So T shared pointer floor node. Make sure we've got the two pointy braces there. And we're going to call this floor node stack. Now this is going to hold the, um, the floor node nodes, and of course we need to include floor node uh, or forward declare it in, or in order to uh, satisfy um, the uh, IntelliSense not recognizing floor node. There it is. So since we have a floor node stack, this is going to be used to keep the floor nodes during our splitting algorithm. But if you recall from the whiteboard talk, uh, this floor node stack will end up empty by the end of the algorithm. That is, as a floor node is no longer splittable anymore, we pop it off and it's gone. But we need all of the floor nodes in the final, uh, final room or the final floor uh, in order to draw those rectangles to the screen or spawn something in those rectangles. So we're going to have another stack to hold all of the, the nodes once they've been uh, finished being split. So let's do T array. Um, and this is going to be of the same type. It's going to be T shared pointer and floor node. And we're going to call it partitioned floor. We don't need to forward declare it twice. Once you've already forward declared it, it's, it's, you're fine. You don't need to do it more than one time. All right, so we have our uh, stack that we're going to use for the algorithm. We also have a stack that we're going to use to store all the nodes when we're done splitting them. And then uh, after this, we can create some functions. So up here in the public section, we're going to create some functions for this algorithm. So some of the things that the floor is going to need to be able to do is, well, partition the floor up into a bunch of different randomly sized rectangles. So the function that we're going to use for the actual algorithm, we're going to call partition. So partition will be the actual function that we call to split the floor up. We're also going to want a uh, function that will give us a random value, either 0 or 1. It's basically like flipping a coin, heads or tails. And this will give us the r random uh, determination that will tell us whether or not to split a node horizontally or vertically. And I'm going to create this function that re uh, returns an n32, and I'm going to call it coin flip. Coin flip will simply return a 0 or a 1 randomly. Okay, so next we want a function to tell us whether or not we should split a node. And this, this function is going to basically check the size of the node, see if it's at its minimum size. If it is, we can't split it. And then it's also going to um, determine whether or not we should split it based on some other random criteria. For example, uh, we, we don't want to keep splitting nodes until they're all one by one squares. We want to split them and stop splitting them at some random time. And so this function will determine yes or no, should we split, and it will, it will determine that. And so what we're going to do is um, we're going to create a should split node function that returns a bool. But also, we should, we should uh, pass into this function whether or not we're splitting vertically or horizontally. And so I'm going to, for convenience, create an enum. I'm going to say enum class e split orientation. Now, if you're creating an enum and you use the class keyword here, you're basically making what's called a scoped enum, which will force any reference or any um, times that you use the enum constants. Um, you have to fully qualify that constant's name with the enum class name here. And I'm just going to give this enum two enum constants. I'm going to call this uh, ESO, not for Elder Scrolls Online, but for eSplit orientation, and call it horizontal. And then I'm going to have ESO vertical. And so here we have a basic enum, and it's got 
two selections, ESO vertical and ESO horizontal, and we can use this to determine whether or not we are splitting horizontally or vertically. So when we create our should split node, we can pass in a uh, e-split orientation enum. So let's do a bool return type, and let's call this should split node. And this is going to take a T shared pointer of type uh, floor node. And of course, we forward declared for floor node down here below. And here we're finding ourselves using that. So instead of just continuing to keep copying the class keyword and pasting it up higher wherever we use it, one, one thing we can do is instead of forward declaring it down there, we can forward declare the class up here above class floor. So now we have it already forward declared. So should split node takes a t-share pointer floor node and let's call this in node a or simply in node that would work and it'll take an e-split orientation called orientation and that'll help us to make the determination of whether it should be split because we know which way we're trying to split it. All right, next we need a function to actually try to split a node. And so we're going to make a bool because we wanted to return whether or not the split was successful. We're going to call this split attempt. And it's going to take a T shared pointer of type floor node called in node. So I can copy that. And that's it. It's just going to take a node. It's going to try to split it. If it does split it, great. If it doesn't, well, it'll return false. It'll return true if it's successful. And then next we need split horizontal and split vertical functions. These will actually split the node horizontally or vertically depending on the type of... Uh, basically, um, it'll split horizontally or vertically and we'll call those depending on the orientation that we would like to split it. So these will be void functions and they'll be called split horizontal and it's going to take a T shared pointer floor node and I'm going to call this in A. It's also going to take a T shared pointer floor node called in B and a T shared pointer floor node called in C. Because when we split a node, we're essentially creating two more nodes and then the original will be deleted. So we'll have an A, B, and C. We're going to uh, basically split A and use the information in A to populate the information in B and C. And then of course A will be deleted. So that's split horizontal. We're also going to create another function that takes the same arguments and we're going to call this one split vertical. Just like that. So we have these functions and we're going to be using these in our algorithm. And we can go ahead and let IntelliSense create a basic empty definitions for these functions. So I'm going to go ahead and let IntelliSense define the partition function. It's just going to be empty for now. That's fine. We'll end up providing some functionality for these. So let's just go ahead and let IntelliSense do this for all of these. Okay, that takes care of all of them. And you'll see that they all have their own um, automatically generated um, function bodies and you'll see that IntelliSense gave us returns, uh, default re return statements for the ones that return uh, some sort of value and then the ones that are void, they just are empty. And before we wrap it up here, I'm just going to create one more, uh, one more function because once we're finished with this algorithm, we're going to want access to this partitioned floor which will contain all the nodes that have already been split up. So I'm going to create a force inline uh, getter that will take that will re return a T array of type T shared pointer floor node and it's going to be called get partitioned floor. It's going to be const and it's going to simply return partitioned floor. All right, so now we have the skeleton for this class going to compile it and you might have caught this but I forgot a semicolon 
on this uh, line where I forward declared floor node. So you probably caught that and put that in there. I didn't, but thanks to uh, modern technology, the compiler was able to yell at me for that. So I finished, uh, so I added that and we will finish this video here. Uh, we've got the skeleton for the floor and next we will continue creating this algorithm so that we can uh, split the room up into random sized floor nodes.